artificial intelligence. It's on everybody's mind. So when I was asked to give this talk about artificial intelligence, I was thrilled. But I was genuinely conflicted. On the one hand, do I lean into the doom and gloom of AI, where AI disrupts everything, causes the loss of millions of jobs, and do my best to explain the environmental and ecological impact of this energy-hungry technology? Or do I take on the techno-optimist talking points, where, yeah, AI disrupts everything, but it also creates millions of new jobs. And believe it or not, AI will figure out the environmental and ecological impact of this energy-hungry technology. The thing is, I believe both may be true. But what I'm learning as the founder of AI Coachella Valley and the publisher of the Pledge for Responsible AI is that the real danger isn't just job loss or energy use. The real danger is this habit I've seen forming all around me with my fellow humans as they interact with AI. This habit of unthinking. <laughs> the silent surrender of human agency, creativity, memory, and ideas to AI. The good news, there is an antidote for unthinking. In researching this topic, I discovered several neuroscientists and cognitive experts pointing to four uniquely human traits that machines can never have. Nostalgia, gratitude, curiosity, and imagination. These are your superpowers against the unthinking. So, in the spirit of today's talk, let's tap into that very first of those superpowers, nostalgia. And please, cast your mind back a bit and travel, time travel with me, back to about 40 years ago. And let's talk about AI, Skynet, and how humans are losing the battle for critical thinking. For those who may not remember, Skynet was the artificial intelligence from the blockbuster Terminator movies of the 80s and 90s. It starred this guy, the Terminator, as a time-traveling cyborg sent back in time by the machines to do away with this human being, Sarah Connor, who we later learn is a badass mother and the leader of the human resistance. The premise of the film, I mean, stick with me on this one, okay? The premise of the film was that Skynet was an artificial intelligence developed by a tech company in Silicon Valley, embedded across billions of computers, devices, and machines and robots, suddenly, one day, becomes self-aware, that's Judgment Day, and decides, we don't need humans. Watching it, in the theater back in the day was a lot of fun. Skynet AI today, it feels less like science fiction and more and more disconcertingly real. Now, look, we won't see tanks and robots rumbling down Highway 111 outside the library. We won't see T-1000s smashing down the doors at Morningside or the Springs or Sensei. But make no mistake, the battle has begun, the battlefield has been set, and that battle is for our minds. 
It won't be fought with bullets and bots, but with algorithms, interfaces, and everyday conveniences. And the real question isn't whether AI is useful. Of course it is. The real question is how much do we let AI replace what makes us human and risk falling into a perpetual state of unthinking? Look, I know that sounds dramatic, but wait till Sarah Connor gets here. In the meantime, how did we get here? Long before this current crop of AI came along, before smartphones, before Google Maps, before ChatGPT, humans had a fully functioning operating system. It was called a brain. And we used it yeah, a fair amount. Back in the day, we dialed phone numbers from memory. We navigated cities with paper maps. And we learned about the world through books and magazines and really from each other, person to person. And every one of those actions was a jolt, a zap to the cognitive mainframe, synaptic routine that basically kept your minds active, nimble, and alert, and for some, even growing, something called neuroplasticity. Then came the conveniences. We traded dialing for swiping, paper maps for digital apps, information for misinformation. We basically started outsourcing pieces of our brains to our phones, feeds, and algorithms, something neuroscientists call cognitive offloading. A quick show of hands. Who still remembers their childhood landline? That's, that's pretty good. I kind of expected that. I think we would be hard-pressed to even remember our best friend's mobile phone number these days. The point being, we're just not using our brains the way we used to, especially for remembering. A 2017 study by Andrew Ward, who's a neuroscientist and an author of many, many research papers, including brain drain and mind blanking, concluded that simply having your phone nearby was like cognitive kryptonite. So let me ask you, if you are the superheroes in your own little movies, why on earth are you carrying kryptonite in your back pocket? You're thinking it's shrinking. Your intelligence, irrelevant. So let's put this all together, and where do we stand? We've got all these years of cognitive offloading. We have this slow creep of cognitive decline as we age. There's this TikTok brain thing out there. Look it up, it's real. And now along comes AI who wants to be your best friend and your second brain. Unthinking is not just hypothetical, it's here. It's a full-scale takeover, not by force, but by mindless invitation. And if the cognitive offloading was the first wave, ambient memory is the tsunami. Remember this date, April 10, 2025. That's the day when OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, basically the most popular AI service out there, quietly switched on something called ambient memory. When AI and the machines begin remembering everything about you, your words, your thoughts, your prayers, your routines, your patterns, your preferences, your decision-making, they call it training models, I call it forgetting ourselves. And years from now, April 10, 2025, may just be remembered as the judgment day. Not the day that machines took over, but the day humanity began outsourcing thinking itself. And if yesterday's attention economy was a fight for mindshare, today's AI psychology is cognitive warfare. So, how do we even fight back? How do we even put up resistance? In the spirit of this talk, I suggest we unleash our inner Sarah Connor 
And we do that by strengthening those traits that make us, us. Do you remember those four superpowers I mentioned a little bit earlier? I'm hoping you do. That's the whole point of the talk. (laughs) Here they are again, but this time I'm going to remind you of them, but based on a timeline. Think of nostalgia that anchors us in our past, gratitude that grounds us in our present, curiosity that reaches for the future, and imagination transcends time itself. These are the superpowers to push back against unthinking. Sing. Jesus, sing. Fifteen minutes talking about these damn machines, and you're still feeding them. I'm holed up. I don't have much time. Future? Past? What does it matter? We messed up. We gave it all away. Ideas, creativity, thinking itself. And now they own it. They don't need your weapons. They only need your mind. And most of you just handed it over. No bombs, no bullets. Just surrender. The unthinking. You got nieces, Singh? Nephews? And you, out there, you got kids? Grandkids? What world are you leaving? You're letting the machines write their future. Maybe those human superpowers, they're all you got. Then you better use them. Fight with them. Every time AI thinks for you, resist. Every prompt, every shortcut, resist. You gotta stay alert. Use your brains. Get off your damn devices. Don't slip into unthinking. Think for yourself. Sing, wrap it up now. Today is Judgment Day. There is a scene towards the end of Terminator 2 where Sarah Connor, who we just heard from, carves two words into a wooden table. No fate. We later learn this is shorthand for something even bigger. Future has not been written. There is no fate but what we make for ourselves. So maybe it's time right now for you to carve your analog fate into the digital future. A future where AI will be everywhere. A future where AI is steering, shaping, redirecting your attention. A future where AI is rescripting your realities with invisible algorithms. But every time you reach for those four superpowers, nostalgia, gratitude, curiosity, and imagination, you fire up something within that no algorithm can touch. And if you really want to resist and delay this unthinking, Here's a simple cheat code that I want you to take with you when you leave the library today. Rename your AI. They are not your friends. They are not your companions. They are not your allies. They are ones and zeros. They are machines and algorithms. Extractive data miners with a clever name, AI. And so when AI offers to think for you or remember for you or create for you, just stop. Just pause. Invoke your Sarah Connor spirit and think for yourself. Resist falling into this habit of unthinking. Because every act of resistance is your declaration that my memories are my own, my thoughts are my own, my ideas and imagination are my own, and I will resist. Thank you.